Good Wednesday afternoon, guys. My name is Jerry Miller, and welcome to the I Love Seville show. Thank you for joining us on a Wednesday. We are live in Charlottesville. We're live in the Commonwealth, the country, and the world on this, the I Love Seville network. This morning, I had a plan for a show for you that I was really, really, really proud of. I was going to welcome somebody in the real estate business that was going to analyze properties around Charlottesville and the potential that they had for this community. We were also going to spotlight two small business owners, one a female, the other a male on this program, to discuss everything Charlottesville, Virginia related. The entire topic, the entire agenda, it changed. Why it changed was because of something that was posted today on the mayor of Charlottesville's Facebook page. These topics, entrepreneurship, small business ownership, real estate, and just being an evangelist of the community, the original plan for the show, are now put to a side. We'll talk about those tomorrow and Friday. Today we have to talk about a post from the mayor of Charlottesville's Facebook page that is getting tremendous traction. Judah Wickhauer is our director. Judah, what I'd like for you to do is get the post on screen first. Once the post is on screen, I will read it to everybody that is watching. Let me know when it's on there, please. It was done this morning. It was done by the mayor of Charlottesville, and it says, Charlottesville, colon, the beautiful, ugly it is. It rapes you, it comforts you, and it's cum stain sheet and tells you to keep its secrets. Got some thoughts written down here that I'd like to relay to you. This, the post is on screen. Read it, and then, Judah, if you could, come back to me, please. And if you look to see if there's any frames dropping there, J-Dubs, if you can look into that for me, please. I'm looking into it. All right, if we can do that quickly. Um, thank you. I'm going to disregard the emotion that I'm feeling right now. I love Charlottesville so much. So much that I name my business, I Love Seville. Today I woke up from, with a post from the mayor's Facebook page about the town I love. And then my phone started getting bombarded with text messages from friends, from family, from business owners, from community members alike. I decided to put some thoughts on paper so I could keep the emotional aspect out of this. This statement is especially disturbing to me, coming from a mayor of the community, a person who should be the champion of Charlottesville, Virginia. If she has specific ways to improve Charlottesville, I would like to hear them. But the anger, the vitriol that the mayor puts on display has absolute zero value to making this community a better place for all of us. There are those who talk and there are those who take action. We are fully behind action in this community. We are fully behind results and positive performance that improves Charlottesville, Virginia. If you desire discussion, please initiate discussion. We are always happy to discuss the history of Charlottesville, Virginia, how to improve this city, how to make it a better place for everyone. However, how do her harsh words from this morning make this community a better place for us? How do they make it a better community for the next generation? I'm asking you sincere questions here. Comparing Charlottesville to a cum-stained sheet offers nothing positive for the community. Comparing Charlottesville to a cum-stained sheet and using terminology like, it rapes you, it comforts you, it triggers emotions with people, women in particular, that have suffered rape. 
I have received 12 text messages, direct messages, or emails from women who have been raped. And they said when they read these comments from the mayor, it triggered emotions that they are still dealing with today. This is the second time in about 45 days that Mayor Nakia Walker has utilized social media to divide the community. On Super Bowl Sunday, Mayor Nakia Walker did a Facebook Live that was about two hours long. It was a dis discombobulated diatribe where she talked about credit card usage and how she was paying members in this community $25 gift cards from her city-issued credit card to speak before council or to offer her ideas that could she, she then could present to council. The reason I'm bringing this up to you, citizens, to you, community members, and to you, taxpayers, are for the following reasons. If it was not for that Facebook Live on Super Bowl Sunday, no one outside of City Hall would have learned about the internal, internal memo from Lisa Robertson, the acting city attorney. The Facebook Live from Mayor Nakia Walker not only leaked internal memos from inside City Hall, but it also threw a number of people that work in City Hall under the bus. She said, I had no idea I could not use these gift cards. Threw the director of finance under the bus and mentioned other folks as well. From my standpoint, leaking internal documents is not governing. From my standpoint, comparing a community that you are supposed to lead and comparing it to a cum-stained sheet is not leadership. From my standpoint, the mayor of Charlottesville, Virginia, is the champion of the community. And in her four years on the job, she's gone on record with the New York Times, and she called the city of Charlottesville an ugly to the soul kind of place in the world's newspaper. And that's exactly what the New York Times is. Today, she compares the community to a cum stained sheet. I'm going to ask you some questions. And I'm going to ask you to think on your own. Is what the mayor did today constructive at all? Do you look forward to explaining this language to your children? Is this how we affect positive change in our community? I'm going to repeat the questions to you again. Is what the mayor did this morning constructive at all? Do you look forward to explaining the language the mayor of Charlottesville, Virginia did to your children? Is this how we affect positive change in this community? The reason I ask these questions is because I wanted to have you think about some of the stuff I'm thinking as opposed to me relaying my thoughts to you and maybe saying, this is what I think we should be thinking ourselves as a community. When it's all said and done, the four years the mayor has had on the dais, the four years the mayor has had in City Hall, has been littered with dysfunction. We have arguments in city council meetings. We have the term racist and racism being leveraged by the mayor when she does not get what she wants. I'm not afraid to say that. That's what's happening. 
when things are not going her way from a policy standpoint or from a governance standpoint, the word racist or racism is quickly utilized by the mayor. I'm not afraid of that. The reason I'm not afraid of that is because I know that's not who I am. Instead, I know who I am is someone who's unafraid to hold people accountable, even if they are in positions of power, in positions of influence, even if they don't look like me. I understand I have a platform and a voice. And folks, as we head to an election on November 3rd, an election that's going to determine two spots on council for the next four years, I feel compelled. I feel compelled more than ever for using that voice, to utilize that voice in that platform. My wife, my son, the children we're, we're talking now about potentially having, I want them to live and grow in a community that is equitable, that treats people black, white, Puerto Rican, Haitian equally, a community that is not a rich white playground. I say all the time on this program, I want my son to grow and mature in as diverse a community as possible because I understand diversity breeds eclectic thinking, eclectic action, empathy, patience, and love. What the mayor of Charlottesville is doing What the mayor of Charlottesville is doing is tearing us apart. She's trying to burn us down and rebuild the community in her eyes and in her vision. And I'm going to be frank and to the point. The Charlottesville have some skeletons and some demons it has to deal with and confront. Oh, well, absolutely it does. We still have statues in public parks that we have done nothing with. Is racism part of Charlottesville? Yes, there is racism in this community. We would be damn fools if we did not acknowledge these things. However, the mayor of the community is not doing her part to try to mend or fix, or heal. Instead, she has a huge, huge container of gasoline, and she's throwing that fuel to get this fire to spread across 10.2 square miles that we call the city, and across a 300,000 person Central Virginia community that without question is tied to Charlottesville, Virginia. If you live in Louisa, Orange, Fluvanna, Green, Nelson, Albemarle, or anywhere in between, your municipalities go as Charlottesville, Virginia goes. Today, the Commonwealth, the Mid-Atlantic, and perhaps beyond, see that the mayor of Charlottesville, Virginia has utilized the word rape, has utilized the word come stained when describing the town that she leads. If you're in Northern Virginia, 
in Tennessee, North Carolina, or South Carolina, and you read this, you hear this, you see this. If you're a student at the University of Virginia, and your friend and family network is outside of this town, you're likely reading and hearing and seeing this and passing it along down the road. What does this do for the community? What does this do for the economy? What does this do for tourism? What does this do for a community that is trying to find its identity coming out of a pandemic that no one in the world, not a single person was prepared for? This town and this central Virginia region is as vulnerable as it's ever been. We're fresh on the heels of August 12, 2017. We have not healed. I was on the street of market myself in front of this building seeing evil and sin that I'd never seen before on August 12th. Seeing guns and militia and weapons and blood and violence that I'd only seen in movies. My wife, she begged me not to come. I lied to her. I'm not proud of it. I told her I was going to go to ACAC downtown on A12, 2017, to work out for about 90 minutes and I would be back. Instead of going to ACAC downtown, I went to Market Street. And I saw, I saw evil that unfortunately only the men and women in our military probably see during wartime. I saw people pointing weapons and using the N-word and worse just because of the color of somebody's skin. It took me a while to get over that. But A12 was the inspiration of this show, the I Love Seville show, that showcases the best of Charlottesville. And some have said on my Facebook page this morning, why has the platform evolved to holding folks accountable as opposed to championing entrepreneurs and nonprofits and those who do well. And I thought about that. And my response to that is this. Until, until we cannot truly champion and pedestal and scream Charlottesville, Virginia from the tips of Carter's Mountain until the top elected official in this town realizes the behavior she is doing is dividing us. Someone said to me, and I won't use her name, that you're using your platform not to champion small business, but instead to go after the mayor. And my response to that was, if Mayor Nakia Walker had not have compared Charlottesville, Virginia to a cum-stained sheet, utilizing words like rape that are trigger words in the comparison of Charlottesville to a cum-stained sheet, we wouldn't be talking about this right now. If Mayor Nakia Walker had not have done a Facebook Live on Super Bowl Sunday where she threw the acting city attorney, Lisa Robertson, under the bus, the director of finance under the bus, and many other employees inside City Hall under the bus over her credit card usage, guess what? If she did not do that Facebook Live, we wouldn't be talking about it right now. The reason there's an article in today's Daily Progress about credit card usage is because she chose to air the dirty laundry inside City Hall. 
The reason we're talking about Charlottesville and its comparison to a cum-stained sheet is because of a post she did this morning on Facebook. I'm being told now that Mayor Nakia Walker has been banned from Facebook for 30 days. Multiple people have sent me the text and multiple people have sent me screenshots. Facebook should ban the mayor of Charlottesville, Virginia for 30 days. The same way Facebook and social media ban the former president of the United States, Donald Trump, because the folks that are atop the totem poles of these social media platforms found Trump's language as divisive and, and, and creating violence in the Capitol, that same logic is now being utilized by Facebook to ban the mayor of Charlottesville from using rhetoric and language that is dividing us to the very core. I've been in this town for 21 years. Many of you that have watched or are watching this show or are listening to this show right now have been in Charlottesville a heck of a lot longer than that. I came here as a first year at the University of Virginia, Dabney 101, old dorms. Met some of my best friends in life at the university. About six months into being a first year at the university, I realized that this community in this town was going to be my home for a long period of time. It has everything I love. It's got restaurants and food. It's got sports and outdoors. It's got hiking and nature. It's got an economy and a small business community that loves to support each other. A rising tide is good for all ships. It's got breweries and vineyards and wineries. There's reason to come and welcome family to this community, whether it's for Thanksgiving, Christmas, or a long weekend. It's a special place. I can't sit around idly anymore. I won't. It's not fair to our kids, the next generation. It's us who is entrusted to maintain and grow and build the legacy that is Charlottesville. And to allow it to be torn down by someone who is I don't know, angry, content on dividing, focused on destroying, motivated by racism. There I said it. You know, a lot of folks say that there is no such thing as reverse racism. And it took me a while to digest that statement. In the four years I've seen her on this job, I've seen nothing but racist rhetoric from her. Nothing but racist rhetoric. I just don't even understand this. Do you? There's a place for activism in our community. We need activists. We need the Tanisha Hudsons of the world. Tanisha's providing value for Charlottesville. She's at all the meetings. She holds people accountable. She has an important role 
Tanisha, in Charlottesville, I admire what you do, Ms. Hudson. I do. I sincerely and genuinely mean that, Tanisha. But once you get elected and you're on the dais, and then you get voted by your peers on the dais and get named the mayor, that activist mindset has to change. You then go from activist to champion. You go from activist to evangelist. You go from activist to healer. You go from activist to a magnet for the community that tries to create positivity for those across the board, regardless of skin color. What's happening today is the definition of destruction. Are we gonna leave the town that we love for our children this way? Or is it time for us to speak up and say enough is enough? And is it completely our fault because the mayor ran on a platform of quote unquote unmasking the illusion? Is this the bed we made ourselves as voters? And if so, is it our fault? Is it now our responsibility on the 3rd of November to go to the voting box and make sure this person does not get another four years on the job? <laughs> because damn it, I think it is. I'm going to try this from a business. I'm going to try to use a business analogy. The city of Charlottesville is a business. It's got a $200 million budget, roughly. There's a city manager, Chip Boyles, who's the CEO. There are five individuals, and Nakia Walker, Lloyd Snook, Michael Payne, Cena McGill, and Heather Hill. And these five individuals are the board of directors that manage the CEO. Us, the taxpayers and the voters, we own this company. Think of it as publicly traded. We're the stockholders in the company. We pay taxes, we live here. We're the stockholders of the company. If the stockholders of the company, me, you, and other taxpayers alike, went to the CEO or the board of directors and we said, how do we improve this city? Can you imagine if one of the board of directors said, we can improve it, we cannot improve it, we have to tear it down, this is an ugly to the soul kind of company, is a cum stain type of business. What would we, as stockholders in the business, ask of that board of director who said, or she said, it's an ugly to the soul kind of place, it's a cum stain kind of place, utilizing rape to compare the company to get her point or agenda across. What would we as stockholders do? We would demand that the CEO or that member of the board resign, get fired, or quit immediately. That's literally what would happen. If stockholders of Apple went to Tim Cook and said, Tim, we have our hard-earned money invested in this business. Tim, what are you going to do for us because we're paying your company, we're capitalizing your company with our hard-earned money to help the company grow and to go to new heights. 
And if Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple, responded, this company stinks. It's an ugly to the soul kind of company. It's a cum stained company. What would we do as stockholders to the CEO of Apple? We would demand his resignation. How is it any different than this circumstance here? Please, I'm asking a question genuinely. The value proposition of Charlottesville is so many different things. It's these phenomenal restaurants, it's these phenomenal breweries, it's these phenomenal wineries, it's the phenomenal outside hiking opportunities and mountain biking opportunities and kayaking opportunities that we have. We got the Rivanna River, we got Walnut Creek Park, we got Pretty Creek Park, we got O Hill, we got some of the best music in the world. Corin Capshaw and, and Red Light and the Paramount and the Jefferson and Kirby Hutto at the Pavilion have, have turned Charlottesville into a mecca for live music. We have hotels. It's the, the wedding capital of the East Coast right behind Charleston, South Carolina. We got this phenomenal university that's producing individuals every year and these individuals are falling in love with Charlottesville and choosing to stay in this community and, and, and marry and raise their families and start businesses and, and say, this is going to be my home for the rest of our lives. We have so many benefits going in our favor. But when the mayor of the town, the mayor of the town, the most influential person, when you have the label mayor that comes with responsibility, when the mayor of the town continues to disparage and knock and humiliate and embarrass and demean and insult and divide our town, all the phenomenal elements we have, weddings, breweries, wineries, tourism, sports, Tony Bennett, downtown mall, music, restaurants, all those phenomenal things are overshadowed. All of them. You know why? Because in the age of social, digital, and mobile media, perception is reality. In the perception, the most influential elected official in a 60-mile radius of Charlottesville, Virginia, is putting out for the world is that this region is disturbed, disgusting, ugly, and should be destroyed and rebuilt in her own eyes. How is that good for the region? How is it positive for the region when you tell the world's newspaper in a front page story that it's an ugly to the soul kind of place? How is it good for the region on Super Bowl Sunday when you throw half of City Hall under the bus to protect your tail from legal ramifications over using a city-issued credit card to pay people $25 an hour in gift cards to speak in front of city council in support of your ideas on the dais? How is it positive for this community comparing Charlottesville to rape and cum stain sheets? These are the same tactics that our former president has utilized. The same tactics. Things don't go her way and we're racist. You can't use the city credit card to pay people 
$25 an hour of taxpayer money to talk in front of other city council members in support of your ideas. Oh, I can't do that? You guys are racist. Today on Facebook, after she compared Charlottesville to a cum-stained sheet, she did a handful of other posts and literally tagged Lloyd Snook, Heather Hill, Cena McGill, and Michael Payne, her colleagues on the dais, basically calling them racist. No one's willing to speak up and stand up because of fear. Because of fear. And that fear is a powerful tool that can be leveraged and utilized like a hammer when building a home. But once you realize that hammer needs somebody to swing it for it to be effective, and once you realize that that hammer is nothing but an empty threat, then you start getting the courage to speak up and to identify what Mayor Nakia Walker is doing is the definition of racism herself. Do you hear? What she is doing is the definition of racism herself. In Charlottesville and in Central Virginia, it's time we say enough is enough, right? How much more destruction needs to happen? If you're willing to throw all your colleagues on the dais, your fellow city councilors under the bus and call them racist, if you're willing to take every member of city, if you're willing to take some members of city hall, including um, the acting city attorney, including the director of finance, and throw them under the bus, what's next? This reeks of desperation to me. Does it not you? This reeks of desperation of someone who is seeing her base splinter and sprint for the exits. I've said on this show and on this network for about a year now that November 3rd 2021 is the most important election in Charlottesville, Virginia history. You got to figure out what you're going to do with the CEO and whether Chip Boyles is the guy you're going to go with moving forward. From my standpoint, Chip's doing a hell of a job. You got to figure out a $53 million West Main Streetscape project and whether you're going to take 18 million or whatever the number is from the Commonwealth of Virginia. And if you don't take that 18 million, it immediately is going to go to a roundabout in Gordonsville and Orange County. Orange County wants the city of Charlottesville not to take the money because they need that money themselves for a roundabout in Orange County, in Gordonsville. You got school reconfiguration. You got a promise with the Albemarle County uh, government and this parking garage in downtown Charlottesville and whether or not you're going to build it. We're coming out of COVID. The Charlottesville and Almoral County budgets are in absolute shambles, budget strapped. You got a downtown mall that's got a vacancy rate of nearly 25%. You got the tax base, employers, leaving the city because people can now work remotely, virtually at home on their laptops. So the need for office buildings in the city are not nearly as important as what they used to be. All these elements have made this November 3rd election the most important in Charlottesville history. But you know what? I'm going to put all that to a side for now. You know why the November 3rd election is so critically important? Because Mayor Nakia Walker is on the ballot. Heard? That's why it's so important. 
because Mayor Nakia Walker is on the ballot. And it's time to walk the walk and talk the talk. And how you do that is on the voter booth on the 3rd of November. And you take someone who was first an activist and a part-time Parks and Rec employee, and you realize we made a mistake put you in this office. You're in over your head. You had no political experience beforehand. You were working part-time in the Parks and Rec's department. I can't cut to the chase any more than that. It's time we stop being afraid. It's time we stop being afraid. It's time we stop being afraid. We must hold this individual accountable for actions and for words that are not unifying but are dividing instead. We owe it to our kids. We owe it to the 12 women who reached out to me this morning about the use of the word rape and the emotions it triggered and within them. We owe it to all the businesses in this community that are hanging around, hanging on by a thread because if we don't realize that these businesses and the folks that own them, our neighbors and our friends and our family, are the core of this local economy. And if we lose them, the economy is going to suffer. And you know what's going to happen when it does? the region becomes more wealthy and white. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. And then I'll get off here. Ask your friends these questions. Ask your family these questions. These are the topics we should be having conversations we should be having at dinner, obviously without the cum stained sheet, right? The mayor and what she did, was it constructive? First question, what the mayor did this morning, was it constructive? Second question, how do you explain this behavior from a quote unquote leader to the next generation. The next generation of leaders who are watching and learning from us. You know, my son just turned three. And there's nothing, I don't want to speak for all parents, I'm just going to speak for myself and my wife, okay? Until we had our son, We didn't realize that we were missing a part of our heart. <laughs> it sounds so crazy. <sighs> until we had our son, until our son was born, and I'm watching my wife 36 hours of labor, pushing a bowling ball through her body in the most agonizing pain possible. I'm watching her be this, like, this superhero, 
birthing life, and I'm sitting there, what, holding her hand and telling her she can do this? You got this? What does the guy do? Jack shit. The woman does all the work. I see this little boy come out of her. Turned three on Saturday. And I was having a conversation with her. It's like, I didn't realize that part of my heart was missing until he was born. Other parents can relate. He's made us better, a better man and a better woman more empathetic, more loving. When your little kid, when your child, no matter the age, I would imagine, I only have three years of experience here, okay? Only three. I'm a rookie when it comes to being a dad. But when that little boy says, I love you, dad, nothing else in the world matters. Nothing matters. I feel this incredible pressure. I feel compelled to, to work hard and to provide as a, soul, as a soul earner for the family, I feel this incredible pressure and I feel compelled to, to, to consider his legacy and to consider this community he's being raised in. I feel this incredible pressure and I feel compelled to, to, to create a, a community and a foundation in a world where he can grow up in that's diverse in thought, diverse in skin color, diverse in look. I feel this incredible pressure and I feel compelled to just nurture and love. And when I see the top elected person in the community divide us and tear us down, I immediately think of him. And I think, is this the right spot for him to be raised in? Should we be moving? First thing. I'm sorry, I'm getting emotional here. I apologize. I told myself I was not going to get emotional on this show. I'm sorry. All right, enough is enough. Mayor Nakaya Walker, enough is enough. It's time you resign. Mayor Nakaya Walker, it's time that you resign your post as mayor of Charlottesville, Virginia. I kindly, genuinely, respectfully ask Councillor Lloyd Snook, Councillor Cena McGill, Councillor Michael Payne, and Councillor Heather Hill to do what you can legally to keep things like this from happening again. Mayor Nakaya Walker, for the betterment of this community, please resign. Mayor Nakaya Walker, for the betterment of this community, take your name off the ballot on November 3rd, 2021. You've done enough damage in four years to this community. We are ready to heal. We are ready to move forward. We are ready to come together as a community. We want to come together as a community. And right now, Mayor Nakaya Walker, you are the lightning rod that is dividing all of us. Resign. If this town is such an ugly to the soul kind of place, Mayor Nakaya Walker, Mayor Nakaya Walker, if this town reminds you of a cum stain sheet, perhaps you should move. I can't be more clear, right? Perhaps you should move. Instead of dividing a 50,000-person city and a 300,000-person region. It's time for you to resign, Mayor Nakaya Walker. The community is asking you to do so. Enough is enough. My name is Jerry Miller. This is the I Love Seville Show. Tomorrow's show will be a spotlight on agents of positive change. Tomorrow's show will be a spotlight on small and medium-sized entrepreneurs who are doing positive things for this community. 
tomorrow's show will champion the agents of positive change in this community. There are many, many, many of them. Today's show was about holding someone accountable that has deeply divided us more than we will know. We won't know the true division that she has brought upon Charlottesville and Central Virginia to long down the road. I kindly and respectfully ask you to submit your resignation by close of business today, Mayor Nakaya Walker.